So welcome again, everybody. And I'm happy that you guys uh, showed up today. And uh, we are going to get going, all right? I'm gonna turn off the chat for now. And then uh, we're gonna go back up when we had our conversation together. And let's get going. All right, so again, pen or pencil ready. And same as always, please be attentive to each and every one of us. Raise your hand button is available if you have any questions or comment that you would like to share, especially when we start looking at different real world uh, phenomenon or real world life connections that we're gonna talk about. And proper language, please. I've seen so many good stuff in our chat box because you guys kept it together and using proper language, both type and spoken. I'm really happy with that. So kudos to everybody. Participate today and collaborate. And also, be courteous and polite to each other. And thank you for sharing us how you're feeling today on a scale of 1 to 10. 54 is what Miss Watkins is at. Oh, 57. So, 7. I'm 54. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, Somebody said they were 100 out of 10. I want to talk to that person. Oh, yeah. That's 1,000 out of 100 for Jace. Okay. No, he said 100 out of 10. Cool. So this week today, let's um, look at our week seven. So Science Live today, video on science and engineering practice. So that's SEP. So it's too long. We're going to look at phenomenon, meaning these are some aha moment type of video or images that you guys observe in real life. So we're going to go to real life now. Electromagnets investigation is due today. Um, at 1159. So the only assignment that you guys have would be quizzes, which I forgot to mention because all of you guys who are here in our live will be doing the quizzes live. Okay. It's about eighth grade concepts we learn throughout the year. Tuesday is our first science and engineering skills, which is asking questions and defining problems. I'll explain that later on. And tomorrow also, I want to check in on your electric motor. I want to check to see if you guys already have secured your materials even if those materials are recycled materials of your electric motor i want to know what your progress is last friday i posted um, instructions on that and there's also a guide for you to follow on how to make your model wednesday phenomenon or not do thursday analyzing and interpreting data and also we have Friday, constructing <laughs> explanations and designing solutions. So that's on Friday. So these are all short assignments. It's not like our station lab or investigation lab, and they are all in Google Slides. Now, Google Slides, if you remember last week when we did the electromagnets Google Slides, the interactive notebook, we drag and drop shapes, circles, and whatnot. That's all the same as what we did last week, kind of like an interactive notebook. So they're all in Google Slides, okay? So they're short. That's why the due date is, is, is short. It's not very long because they are very short. The slide is usually like about five slides total okay so that is for assignment now uh, mariana is asking floating pillow assignment is due um i think it's also due today um i did not include that but yes it is due as well today now the the floating pillow assignment just to clarify with you there's no exact answer for the questions that you might have because that will depend on your observation and concept that you can tie it up which is electromagnet so the floating pillow it has actually to do, have to do with your electric and magnetic forces so that is also due today okay let's get going so we are in our science and engineering practices now if you might be wondering it's like okay well i'm not going to be a scientist and i'm not going to be um, an engineer but these practices are actually you don't need to be a scientist or an engineer to learn all these practices. I wanted to emphasize that these science skills are the skills you should be bringing with you to high school, which is why that's one of our targets today. How can you use these skills to help you adjust quickly in the rigor of science classes in high school? If you have all these skills, you are more than ready to take on that high school science class next year. So that's why I wanna end our 
last two weeks, we're going to do all of these seven skills with you guys because this is the most important skill you should have in science. The concept will all follow if and when you have these skills practiced. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I would add on that too, Mrs. White, that mm -hmm. you are all scientists and you are all engineers and you all are technologists and artists and mathematicians. You just may not have the formal title or training, but hello, if you cook food, chemistry, you're welcome, right? If you've ever yeah. built something, engineering, Legos, right? Minecraft counts as building too. You're on technology right now. Hello, technology expert. And then math, who doesn't like counting that money, right? And or earning allowance or putting in the numbers on a phone to call your friend. Earth, yes. That's art, right? We're drawing, we're writing, we're creating things. So you guys are stemologists already. And the layman's term they use is called citizen scientist or citizen scientist. So like you don't have to be in a profession of science or STEM to be a stemologist or a citizen scientist. So we'll talk more about that later. Yes. But just let you know, you are a stemologist already. Exactly. Which is why any of those careers that you might pursue in the future, even if it's They'll not related to STEM, even just in business, we have to know the skills of asking questions, developing and using models, planning and carrying out investigations. Also, the last four would be analyzing and interpreting data, using maths and computational thinking, constructing explanations and designing solutions, engaging in argument. I'm sure you guys have done that in history. And also <laughs> obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. So this week, we're going to we're going to learn and practice the first three skills of science and engineering practices. And we are going to start with the first one, which is asking questions and defining solutions. Now, anything that we observe around us that we might not understand yet, we always start by asking questions. Okay. And if you look at the image, let me go back to that. Um, if you guys remember about the great garbage patch in the ocean. So I think we did that in our um, human impacts project. Um, that is something that we might have some questions on. Okay. How big is that, that uh, trash that has been moving around the Pacific Ocean, for example? So... These are some of um, things that you might want. How did the aurora, aurora borealis happen? So what, what makes that look like this pretty? Okay, so these starts with just questions. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. So let's, um, let's take a look at these three images, A, B, and C. And in the chat box or in your notebook, I would like you to ask questions. So what questions do you have in mind by looking at these pictures? So write it in your notebook or chat box. If you're going to write it on the chat box, you can choose A and then put A. And then what question do you have in mind about A? If you chose B, what question do you have in mind about image B? Or if you choose image C, what question do you have in mind about quest, uh, image C? All right, Edgar says, B, is that a boom? All right, J's, B, is it fire or an explosion? That's good. Um, anyone else um, who would like to choose letter C? What question is forming in your mind? Mina says, why does B look Photoshop? Or C, Emmett says, how fast is the wind speed in letter C? Correct. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, Jolie says, why is there a ring around the light? Yes, we are actually practicing this skills of asking questions. For letter C, why does this happen? So this is a skill that we might be good at. We might be developing. You know, some of us will ask, you know, silly questions at times. But no, it is still a valid question. There's no right or wrong question here because we are trying to question what we are observing and what we see. So Layla says, letter A, why is the little star so perfect looking? So 
She said it's a perfect star. Is it a perfect star, really? It's what is sun. it? It is the sun. But yeah. sun is a star. The sun is right? a star. Yeah. Everyone knows exactly. that. Exactly. Do you guys know that? Please tell me you know that. The sun I is hope a star. they do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these are, these are some of the things that we actually wanted to, to think about when we see something that makes us wonder. And that read is a mine, skill. Mine. Yes. Mine says, I'll, could a whole house really be pulled up into letter C? Yes, that's a and very that's good like question. The Wizard of Oz, right? It makes yeah. you things. That's where it's all about the STEM media life. Where yes. could do things that we see in television, are those real? Could they be real? Could they be? Are they fantasy? And then sometimes they're closer to the truth and sometimes they're not. they're not. But that would be a fun fact check. Sounds like a cool summer school class, Mrs. White. I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are going to, Mrs. Watkins. So our way of thinking upon seeing a phenomenon, just like what you guys saw, starts with an observation. Then we start asking questions. Then we try to find evidence. Okay, I wanna, I wanna know more about this. So you try to find evidence. That's when we either look at some reading resource article, go to a website, and then we start thinking, oh, maybe this is what's happening. And therefore you start hypothesizing. And your hypothesis is a guess, but it is an educated guess because you are actually using some factual evidence when we start uh, putting out speculations, okay? And then we try to test, okay, may, uh, should I test if my guess or my speculation is cor uh, correct or not? So that's when we test. But we're gonna focus first on the questioning part and how we define some problems. So let's take a look at uh, that, uh, sorry, before I move on to the second one. Uh, that's what you're going to find out on the science and engineering practice that you guys will be practicing tomorrow, which is asking questions and defining problems. Now, the second science and engineering practice is analyzing and interpreting data. So just an overview. We have COVID-19. And so after a few weeks that we are on quarantine and all the cases of COVID-19 cases, we create these data. We gather all these data. The pace of corona outbreak on the top right part that you see in there, these are, these are not just a bunch of lines, the squiggly lines that you see, but these actually means something. These lines can be interpreted and you can actually read that if you look down on the x-axis, you will see that this is kind of like a time frame. And then the number of cases is on the y-axis. As you can see, US is that yellow line. And you can interpret that. And again, you don't need to be a scientist or an engineer to understand what the graph is telling us. And in math, Mrs. Beck, I'm sure she has taught you how to graph, how to interpret data. And in science, this is also an important skill that you need to bring with you. Okay. And now how is COVID-19 currently growing? So this is an old data. And if you notice from January 22nd, by the time March 6 hit, there's 25,000 uh, cases in that time frame. And what do you think will happen a week after we left school? Our last day of face-to-face -face school was March 13th it really spiked up. So you can actually interpret the data and actually use that data to actually think about, okay, what's gonna happen next? That's why our scientists and experts are using this data to help us understand the disease or the, the coronavirus and how the case grows and why is it that it is um, growing exponentially this way. Here's what I want you guys to do this time, okay? And the chat, other people can see your answer now so that they could also get that idea from you. So these are two data, A and B. I would like you to analyze these two data and interpret what the pie chart is trying to tell us, as well as the numerical values on letter B. Write it on your notebook, write it on the chat box, 
what information can you gather? It doesn't need to be the whole entire um, info, but what information can you get from data A, the pie chart A, and then that illustration or numerical values in letter B. So go ahead and write your response. So what can you say about the pie chart? What data can you get out of it? Let me get a closer okay. look there, Mrs. White. Hold on. Yes. Maybe I need to go to the even smaller magnifying glass right there. Hold on. Smaller magnifying glass. <laughs> it's so small. It's so small. Yeah, right. Okay. I got Mimi. So you can read on your chat box too, but I'm going to read it out loud. So you see how much cases there has been and the outcomes of the virus, death, recovered cases, and existing cases. Yes. Jolie said for letter A, deaths are very small percentage of COVID-19. So there was very small percentage. And also we can actually take a good look at it and maybe speculate, but it's actually that way. How about letter B? Is there anybody who can share with us what the uh, B, what B information is actually telling us? Uh, Greta said you can see deaths recovered or existing cases. Emmett says A is a representation of all the stats of the corona and the deaths is pretty small, but the amount of infected is huge. That's good. So some of us can be very specific on how they interpret this pie chart. And this is, this is actually an old data. This is, doesn't hold true now because the cases and you know, the progression of change is very, very, very fast you know, and it mutates. Yeah. And they said one person can infect many people and then it keeps spreading. So what does that tell you? That means, let's say, for example, I have COVID here at home. It's, it's very certain that all my house member would have COVID. So that's how dangerous <laughs> this uh, novel virus is. Yeah. And in some countries, in China, for example, I watched a documentary of this whole situation when it burst, they were quarantining within their house, yes. meaning that people did not leave their rooms for a period of time, yes. except just to use the restroom or just to get food. But they were staying away from other people in their home in case to hopefully prevent, like Mrs. White said, if one person had it in the house, hopefully it wouldn't spread to the others. And that one person could then get removed and go to the hospital. The hospital. The would be okay. Yes, exactly. The data that we see around us because we want to understand. Third one, constructing explanations and designing solutions. This is another science and engineering practice that you guys might be already using, but we don't know that we are. But we actually are doing it. Let's try to explain the reason behind these statements. So the first statement is, the fish in the ocean will die if there is less oxygen in water. If you look at the statement, you might be wondering, okay, the fish in the ocean will die if there is less oxygen in the water. So um, try to reason out. So we are going to construct an explanation on letter A. And if you prefer to explain letter B, you can also do that. And it goes, we can tell if there's solar or lunar eclipse. So in that statement, I want you to choose which one you're comfortable of trying to briefly explain. The fish in the ocean will die if there is less oxygen. We can tell if there's solar or lunar eclipse. So how can we express our explanation on these two statements? So go ahead and write it on the chat box. Mimi already has one. Well, water has oxygen in it, and without that oxygen, the fish will die. Yeah, that's good. Um, I have the molecules right here. You might play with these when you're in chemistry class, high school or college. High school, yes. If exactly. Proof, what happens? How about um, letter B? Is there anybody you remember, you guys, uh, solar lunar eclipses? How can we explain this statement? We can tell if there's a solar or lunar eclipse. By looking at it, what, uh, what do we remember about this solar lunar eclipse? Anybody? Nobody? Still writing down? So Lena said, you can see the moon or whatever go over the sun and how and remember we we can also look at how you view it you know when there's solar eclipse when there's lunar eclipse how do they Thanks, how do they look like right so jay said solar um solar eclipse has to do with new moon all right um lunar you guys do an activity with little oreo cookies for this one yeah we did 
think about that demo, right? Yep. Good job, Jay. And, um, for Emmett, he wants to try to explain letter A, the fish's gills are basically lungs. If there's no oxygen, they will suffocate. Yes, thank you, Emmett. And then lunar is when the sun aligns with the earth and the moon perfectly. So there's an alignment. So that's another way of looking at it. Um, and then Elena um, added to Mimi that the sun blocks the moon. <laughs> yes, correct. So these are skills. And now, again, we are trying to reason behind it. Maybe our reason needs a little bit more information. And that is another skill that we need to have when we go to high school. We know some are speculations, not speculation, but some baseline explanation. But of course, we need to tie it up with scientific explanation. So that's when we start looking into um, information from theories, from laws, or scientific explanation that we might have in a textbook or online or any resources that will lead us to the exact answer. But this third skill that you guys have, we're just trying to construct explanation. But apart from that, after we explain it, we also have to design some solutions with these problems that we might be observing. So for example, this too. So how can we solve these problems? So for letter A, there are several fish scales in the ocean, mainly due to trash and depleting oxygen in the water. So if we are going to design a solution to letter A, what do you think can you suggest to come up with a solution for that? Or if you are if you haven't, if you don't know, there has been an influx of pigs in slaughterhouses because workers are not in full force working to produce pork. And you know, slaughter the pigs, but there's less people going into the factory because they, you can't really have a lot of people inside uh, an enclosed space because we are observing social distancing. So that means, how are we going to solve these problem. So if you want to choose A, write down your uh, proposed solution. And if you choose B, write down your proposed solution. So you just type A and then your proposed solution or B, proposed solution. So I see here, um, Mary said, take less pigs to slaughterhouse. Um, well, the, the thing is, our reality is now the pigs kept on reproducing and reproducing, but we are not consuming and we are not slaughtering them to you know to to produce pork to sell you know so if i am an owner of a slaughterhouse because i sell pigs to produce in the market and now there's not much people in our factory and there's more pigs how are we going to solve this problem that we have okay That's a great point and like when you go to the grocery store you're only allowed to have limited meat so we're as a consumer, we're able to buy less. So yeah. that's not only a problem that the pigs are reproducing, but also the meat that's there is not getting purchased. Yes, yes. Edgar, that's very harsh answer. I'm, I'm not going to say it, but thank you for that. Um, make sure that the beaches are clean and streets. So that is to one way of solving our problem for letter A. And take less, uh, what else uh, do we have on the pigs? Anybody who would like to add on to letter B? It's, you know what they're actually doing now? They're actually killing the pigs, unfortunately. That's kind of like their solution for now. But hopefully, Charlotte, it, it is, <laughs> it is, it is, it is kind of sad. But um, we have to actually address the problem as well. So that being said, in your science and engineering practice interactive notebook, you guys will get the chance to design your own solution and maybe sketch your solution if it's more applicable for you to sketch the solution. So for this week, just to um, give you guys an idea. So today you're going to identify some phenomenon or not. So it's just 10 items. We're going to do quizzes live in a few. Tuesday, that's asking questions and defining problems. So I'm going to um, show you some images and you're going to ask questions about it and define some problems that might be a problem. Um, and then you guys will check in with me about your electric motor project. Um, Wednesday, 
analyze and interpret data. So you guys will use some data and then try to read and understand what it is. Thursday, constructing explanations and designing solutions. So next week will be the other four science and engineering practices, but this is what we have throughout the week. All right. So thank you for those who shared. Otherwise, also for the phenomenon or not, um, I set it up in lock mode. So now it should, you guys should be able to um, do the assignment even if you're using a different computer. Um, I changed it to uh, one response and you'll see the point values. It's just 10 points. It's pretty much asking whether it is phenomenon or not phenomenon. Okay? So, that being said, GG, <laughs> it was so fun. If you guys have any questions, type it down. If you don't have any questions, you guys can show your way out and work on your phenomenon assignment today. Wave it out guys. and yeah. One more live, uh, no, two more lives two more. next week is going to be our second part of science and engineering practices. Thank you guys for coming and have a great day. Happy Bye. Monday. Bye. 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 Bye, Jace. All right. If you are not able to log into the science live today because of uh, registration or login issues, next week or even tomorrow, you guys will need to register and sign in. Not register, but sign in using your Google account for school. So it's going to ask you to sign in to Google. So hopefully you guys can be able to join me next week. So here's our rundown for the week. It's science and engineering practices. First three practices or skills in science. And there will be assignment for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And the due dates are here, as you can see. And um, there's a quizzes and phenomenon or not Google form that you are going to um, complete today. Um, electric motor project check-in will be tomorrow, so I'm going to send that survey out as well to check how you are doing, if you have your materials or whatnot. Hopefully to see you next week on Monday. Have a great day.